Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the credentials of 12 new ambassadors to Bahrain. The ceremony was attended by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, the Minister of the Royal Court the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chief of the Royal Protocols. The ambassadors had arrived at Sakhir Palace and were received by the Chief of Royal Protocols. سفير جمهورية بيلاروس سفير جمهورية أستونيا سفير جمهورية كرواتيا سفير جمهورية النمسا سفير جمهورية كينيا سفير الكرسي الرسولي الفاتيكان سفير جمهورية أنغولا سفير أستراليا سفير جمهورية كوت ديفوار سفير جمهورية الجابون سفير نيوزيلندا سفير جمهورية قبرص
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب السعادة نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب كسفراء معتمدين لدى مملكة البحرين التي تعتز بعلاقاتها المتميزة مع دولكم الموقرة ونتمنى لكم بهذه المناسبة فترة عمل مثمرة مليئة بالإنجاز حيث سنحرص على خلالها على تقديم كافة أوجه الدعم والمساندة لتحقيق ما نرجوه معا من تقارب وتعاون مشترك كما أوصيكم جميعا بنقل تحياتي الشخصية إلى أصحاب الجلالة والفخامة الذين نكن لهم كل تقدير ومودة ومحبة وختاما نتمنى لكم المزيد من التوفيق في مهامكم ودوام الصحة والعافية شكرا شكرا أصحاب السعادة I'm sure there will be something like teamwork if we carry on the good work of meetings and communicating with each other. The doors will be open for any suggestions, any ideas that brings us together, hopefully. I think the world is becoming much smaller now than it used to be. And for this reason, there are no excuses for not reaching out for each other and going about the right direction. Bahrain is a, a kingdom of tolerance and peace and cooperation with the whole world as much as possible, as much as we can do, we will open the doors to, to cooperate. Uh, it's been like this for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. All the civilizations in Bahrain has been, you know, cooperating with the world being uh, the world port one day it was called the world port because it linked civilizations, the oldest civilization for trade, for the benefit of the people. We had uh, people to people relations with the Sindh, for example. It was 7,000 years it's uh, documented, documented with seals that shows the relationship, the trait. And this is the reason why Bahrain got used to receiving people from all over the world and feel comfortable with them. And all the people that came to Bahrain have felt comfortable as well with the people. And it's part of our culture, and we are proud of that. Anyway, I, I read the, the protocol speech <laughs> to welcome you and everything. And it can be translated, but my words are my words. And, and this is a promise that we will, inshallah, work together in every field possible that we can do. But what's more important is that uh, culture and religion and good economic efforts, work, and cooperation, this is the, the line. This is the Bahrain line, really. Inshallah. 
I wish you all the best, and I hope you enjoy yourself in Bahrain. And Minister of Foreign Affairs will be with open doors, open arms for anything you suggest or you wish. We want to see the best of relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. His Majesty the King delivered a speech in which he welcomed the accredited ambassadors to Bahrain, which takes pride in its relations with their countries. He wished them a fruitful tenure, in which His Majesty will be keen on providing support to achieve further cooperation and rapprochement. His Majesty asked the ambassadors to convey his personal greetings to their presidents of their countries. His Majesty wished them further success in their duties. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their respective heads of state as well as their good wishes to His Majesty. They also wished the kingdom and its people for their progress and prosperity, praising the close bilateral ties with the kingdom. The royal anthem was then played. على الشرف السلام لسيدي حمله صاحب الجلاله الملك المعظم سلام His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the chairman of the Shura Council of Oman, Sheikh Khalid bin Hilal Al Mawali, to greet His Majesty upon his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty the King affirmed his pride in the well established historical relations between Bahrain and Oman in light of the mutual keenness to strengthen and consolidate the foundations of these relations. His Majesty the King welcomed the Omani Shura Council chairman who conveyed to His Majesty the greetings of the Sultan of Oman, His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to the people of Bahrain. His Majesty conveyed his greetings and sincere wishes of health and happiness to His Majesty the Sultan of Oman and of further prosperity and development to the Sultanate and its people. His Majesty praised the high level of fruitful bahraini Omani cooperation at all levels, praising the pivotal role of the Shura and Representatives Councils in Bahrain and the Omani Shura Council in strengthening fraternal ties, ties of kinship and brotherhood between the two people and supporting the development process in the two countries. His Majesty hailed the signing of a memorandum of cooperation between the Council of Representatives and the Omani Shura Council, which will contribute to supporting parliamentary cooperation and coordination on various common issues in a manner that enhances brotherly relations and benefits the two brotherly countries and people. His Majesty praised these fraternal visits because of their importance in expanding cooperation frameworks, exchanging experiences at the legislative and parliamentary levels, and coordinating stances in various parliamentary forms. He also expressed his appreciation for the pioneering role played by His Majesty the Omani Sultan in supporting and developing joint relationships, praising Oman's leading development under his leadership. 
For his part, the Speaker of the Omani Shura Council expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for the generous hospitality and warm welcome, commending His Majesty's efforts of, uh, and his keenness on strengthening bilateral relations and bolstering parliamentary and legislative cooperation between the two countries for the development of their two brotherly people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa issued Royal Decree 22 of the year 2022, organizing the Electricity and Water Affairs Ministry as follows. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs shall be responsible for, first, the Director General of Energy Efficiency with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary, who shall oversee the Directorate of Energy Efficiency and Central Cooling, the Directorate of Renewable Energy and Research, second, the Directorate of Public and International Relations. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 23 of the year 2022, organizing the Secretariat General of the Higher Education Council as follows. The Secretary General of the Higher Education Council with the rank of Under Secretary is responsible for the Assistant Secretary General with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary, who shall oversee the Directorate of Research and Policies, the Directorate of Academic Services, the Directorate of Accreditation and Licensing. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa yesterday received at Sakhir Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs Sergei Lavrov, on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. The Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs conveyed the greetings and appreciation of the Russian President Vladimir Putin to His Majesty the King and his wishes of progress and prosperity to the kingdom and its people. He expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for the warm welcome and generous hospitality wishing Bahrain further development and growth. His Majesty the King and the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs discussed regional and international developments and issues, especially the situation in Ukraine. His Majesty the King affirmed the importance of resolving the conflict in Ukraine to achieve the two countries' interests and the security and stability of Europe and the world, emphasizing the necessity for restoring to dialogue and diplomatic resolutions according to the regulations of international law to arrive at a political resolution that ends the conflict, ensures the security and peace of all parties, maintains the lives of civilians and delivers humanitarian aid to refugees and displaced persons. His Majesty the King asked the guest to convey his greetings and appreciation to the Russian President and his wishes of progress and prosperity to Russia and its people. His Majesty expressed Bahrain's pride in the historical friendly relations with Russia and its keenness on developing various aspects of cooperation and coordination to achieve the common interests of the two countries and their people.
The Bahraini-Russian relations are witnessing continuous development in various fields. This comes as a result of the keenness of His Majesty the King and the Russian President. For more than three decades, the Bahraini-Russian efforts were crowned with a number of agreements and joint achievements. More than three decades have passed since the Bahraini-Russian relations began. As the past decades witnessed remarkable development in the course of the Bahraini-Russian relations politically, economically, culturally and socially. The development in the Bahraini-Russian relations was through many diplomatic, commercial and investment aspects. And this development led to the strengthening of joint bilateral cooperation in various fields or files. And it is an additional confirmation that uh, these relations were established on the basis of the exchange of common interests in its various uh, dimensions at a steady pace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov, at Ghibiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the ongoing development of Bahrain Russian cooperation and coordination in areas of common interest. Regional and international issues were discussed, in particular, recent developments in Ukraine. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of diplomatic solutions and dialogue in accordance with the rules of international law and of resolving the conflict by peaceful means to support humanitarian relief efforts and establish a lasting and comprehensive peace in the region. For his part, Lavrov expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and for the warm reception and hospitality he received. Lavrov concluded by wishing Bahrain further progress and development. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the International Coordinator of BAPS Swami Narayan Santha Pujaya Swami Brahma Vihari Das at Ghadebiya Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed that cultural diversity has always been a welcome feature of Bahrain's identity and continues to be a source of strength that the kingdom draws upon in realizing its aspirations in line with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's long standing commitment to promoting peaceful coexistence and respect for diversity, which is inspired by the Islamic faith, which urges spreading of the principles of compassion and tolerance. His Royal Highness noted the ongoing initiatives and efforts being made to promote a culture of diversity and dialogue, deepening understanding between cultures and consolidating peace. For his part, Pujya Swami Braham Vihari Das has expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to promoting the values of peace, tolerance and coexistence between people and cultures in which the Kingdom of Bahrain continued growth and prosperity. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with Al Khuhiji family, who expressed their gratitude for His Royal Highness's condolences on the passing of businessman Abdul Hamid Abdul Jabbar Al Khuhiji at Ghadibi Palace. His Royal Highness recalled the virtues of the late Abdul Hamid Abdul Jabbar Al Khuhiji and the significant national contributions made by him. His Royal Highness praised the role played by citizens in the kingdom's development and commended the role of Bahraini families who have been so often at the forefront of economic development. The Al Khuhiji family expressed their appreciation for His Royal Highness's continued support for the Kingdom's citizens. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting.
The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at his office in Al Wadi Palace the Supreme Committee for the Preparation and Organization of the School Games Tournament that, will, that Bahrain will host year 2024. His Highness Sheikh Khalid welcomed the committee, praising the positive Bahraini participation in the 2022 school games competitions hosted by the French city Normandie recently. He stressed that this participation strengthened the Bahraini presence in this international school sports event, adding that this participation has achieved its desired goals, which contribute to supporting Bahrain's efforts to host the next edition of the school sports gathering. His Highness Sheikh Khalid listened to a briefing on the committee's workflow and the preparation or perceptions and arrangements put in place for preparations calling on the committee to do its best to make the event a success. He expressed his trust in young national caterers who are distinguished by their superior organization abilities of major events in the kingdom. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Hazain Al held talks with Oman Shura Council Chairman Sheikh Khalid bin Hilal Al Mawali, who led the parliamentary delegation visiting Bahrain. Zain Al praised the deep and robust relations between Bahrain and Oman and the bonds of fraternity, kinship, and unity of purpose and destiny that support them. The Speaker said that the ties are a model to be emulated at the official and popular levels and in all areas of cooperation, mainly parliamentary, as the distinguished relationship between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Said strengthens them. For his part, and Mawali said that uh, the visit and meetings uh, with officials in Bahrain are an opportunity for the representatives of the people in the two countries to hold fruitful dialogues and constructive discussions. He added that it will also help bolster bilateral relations, identifying aspects of integration and coordination positions and coordinating positions and decisions in regional and international parliamentary forms. The President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, paid an inspection visit to Halad Mahar Health Center in Muharraq to follow up on the implementation of the self-management program and the provision of round-the-clock health services. Sheikh Mohammed reviewed the implementation of the self-management project on the primary health care centers, which is currently undergoing a trial phase in Muharraq before its generalization in all the governance. He praised keenness of all to inform people in Muharraq about Choose Your Doctor program. The SCH president affirmed that the self-management project is in co coordinates with the government program and an embodiment of the goals emanating from a Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. He added it is also in implementation of the national initiatives aimed at further optimizing the health services and ensuring their sustainability. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular meeting and issued a statement following the meeting where it said that it was monitoring with concern the growing systematic campaigns to promote homosexuality in the world. It stated that such campaigns are led by global forces and organizations that strive to distort human nature, destroy religious, moral and social principles and infiltrate constructive or conservative societies, especially Islamic ones, to undermine their values. It stressed its uh, categorical rejection of the satanic campaigns and called on Islamic countries, organizations, people and all supporters of common sense in all religions to stand united in the face of such a reprehensible campaigns. It also said that those behind the campaigns should never be allowed to take advantage of sporting, artistic or cultural events, especially the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, to use them as starting points for their misguided and destructive calls. The meeting noted that the international community should take serious and uh, courageous stances and step against them and should engage in campaigns to defend and promote the values of virtue and common sense. The Council called for reinforcing stability in the Islamic societies by adhering to God's law, upholding and protecting local customs and strengthening solidarity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held official talks uh, with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov, on the occasion of the Russian Minister's official visit to Bahrain. 
During the meeting, the two sides discussed the historical friendly relations between the two countries and the development and growth they are witnessing in various fields and means of enhancing bilateral cooperation in the economic and investment fields and increasing trade exchange to meet the aspirations and common interests of both countries and people. They also discussed the regional and international political and security situations, the latest developments in the eastern Mediterranean and the situation in Ukraine. The two ministers also held a press conference conference in which the Minister of Foreign Affairs made a press statement noting that His Majesty the King received in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Lavrov who conveyed to His Majesty the greetings and appreciation of Russian President Vladimir Putin and his wishes for Bahrain and his people further growth and prosperity. وزير خارجية روسيا الاتحادية في مملكة البحرين ونعرضه عن اعتزازنا بالعلاقات التاريخية الوثيقة التي تربط بين بلدينا الصديقين والتي تقوم على الاحترام المتبادل والتعاون والتنسيق المشترك لكل ما فيه خير وصالح البلدين والشعبين الصديقين لقد استقبل حضر صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة ملك البلاد المعظم بحضور صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء معالي السيد سيرجي لافروف الذي نقل إلى جلالته تحيات وتقدير فخامة الرئيس الروسي فلاديمير بوتين وتمنياته لمملكة البحرين وشعبها بدوام النماء والازدهار وبحث جلالة الملك المعظم ووزير الخارجية الروسي مستجدات الأوضاع والتحديات الإقليمية والدولية وعلى وجه الخصوص الوضع في أوكرانيا حيث أكد جلالة الملك المعظم على همية حل الصراع في أوكرانيا بما يحقق مصالح البلدين الجارين وأمن واستقرار القارة الأوروبية وعلى الأمن والسلم الدولي وضرورة اللجوء إلى الحوار والحلول الدبلوماسية وفق قواعد القانون الدولي من أجل التوصل إلى تسوية سياسية تنهي النزاع وتضمن الأمن والسلم لكافة الأطراف وتحفظ حياة المدنيين وإيصال المساعدات الإنسانية والإيقاثية للاجئين والنازحين وعرب جلالة الملك المعظم خلال اللقاء عن اعتزاز مملكة البحرين بعلاقات الصداقة التاريخية مع روسيا الاتحادية وحرصها على تنمية مختلف جوانب التعاون الثنائي والتنسيق المشترك بما يحقق المصالح المشتركة للبلدين والشعبين الصديقين كما استقبل صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء معالي السيد سيرجي لابروف وبحث مع معالي علاقات التعاون المشترك وفرص تنمية وتطوير التعاون الثنائي بالإضافة إلى القضايا الأقليمية والدولية الراهنة ومستجدات الوضع في أوكرانيا والجهود المبذولة لوقف إطلاق النار والتوصل لتسوية السياسية وتم التأكيد خلال اللقاء على همية مواصلة الجهود لاستكشاف مجالات تعزيز التعاون المشترك في كافة المجالات الاقتصادية والتجارية والاستثمارية بما يؤدي إلى زيادة التبادل التجاري وتطوير التعاون المشترك كما عقدت مع معالي الوزير جلسة مباحثات تدارسنا فيها مسار علاقات التعاون الثنائي بين بلدينا وسبل تعزيز التعاون الثنائي والارتقاء به إلى مجالات أشمل وأكدنا على همية توسيع أفاق التعاون والتنسيق المشترك بما يسهم في تنمية المصالح المتبادلة كما استعرضنا تطورات الأوضاع الإقليمية والدولية والقضايا محل الاهتمام المشترك بما في ذلك القضية الفلسطينية واليمن وسوريا والأمن الإقليمي والملف النووي الإيراني وأكدنا على همية مواصلة الجهود الدولية لتحقيق الأمن والاستقرار في منطقة الشرق الأوسط وعلى وجه الخصوص تجاه الدفع بالعملية السلمية في الشرق الأوسط لحل النزاع الفلسطيني الإسرائيلي وإقامة الدولة الفلسطينية وفق حل الدولتين وقرارات الشرعية الدولية كما تباحثنا في تطورات الوقف في أوكرانيا ومستجدات الجهود الهادفة إلى مواصلة المفاوضات الثنائية 
بين روسيا الاتحادية وأوكرانيا للتوصل إلى وقف إطلاق النار وتسوية سياسية تنهي النزاع وتعيد الأمن والسلم إلى القارة الأوروبية وكت على موقف مملكة البحرين الداعي إلى الحلول الدبلوماسية واستئناف المفاوضات بين الطرفين ولا ضرورة إحلال الأمن والاستقرار والسلام الدائم والشامل في أوكرانيا والقارة الأوروبية لتحقيق النماء والازدهار لصالح شعوبها وضرورة فتح الممرات الآمنة للمدنيين وتوفير الحماية لهم وإيصال المساعدات الإنسانية والإيقاطية للاجئين والنازحين مرة أخرى أرحب بمعالي الوزير سيرجي لافروف وأشكر له اهتمامه بدعم وتعزيز علاقات الصداقة الوثيقة بين بلدينا وشعبينا الصديقين متمنيا له التوفيق والسداد Уважаемый господин министр, дорогой друг, уважаемые дамы и господа, прежде всего хотел бы еще раз искренне поблагодарить наших бахрейнских друзей за изумительно теплый, доверительный прием и прекрасную организацию пребывания здесь нашей делегации. Особо хочу выделить встречу, которая состоялась с Евровичным королем Хамадом. Она была посвящена стратегическому обзору наших отношений, в том числе на основе тех контактов, которые состоялись в прошлые годы между Его Величеством и Президентом Российской Федерации, а также с учетом телефонного разговора, который в марте этого года произошел между лидерами России и Бахрейна, и в ходе которого обсуждался в принципиальном плане весь комплекс наших отношений и, конечно же, ситуация на международной арене. Мы также провели очень полезную встречу с наследным принцем, премьер-министром королевства Бахрейн и сегодня продолжили дискуссии с моим коллегой и другом, господином министром иностранных дел. В начале апреля этого года мы уже встречались в Москве, где провели откровенный полезный диалог. И регулярность нашего общения лишний раз подчеркивает необходимость в это непростое время поддерживать контакты, постоянно сверять часы и искать возможности развития наших отношений в меняющихся условиях. Мы сегодня предметно обсудили вопросы нашего торгово-экономического сотрудничества. Товарооборот растет, но абсолютные цифры очень и очень скромные. Они не устраивают ни наших друзей, ни российских экономических операторов. Есть хорошие перспективы, которые мы сегодня договорились продвигать. Перспективы реализации совместных проектов в области промышленности, транспорта, фармацевтики. Условились активнее использовать возможности межправительственной комиссии российско-бахрейнской по торгово-экономическому и научно-техническому сотрудничеству, которая планирует свое очередное заседание провести здесь, в Монаме, в нынешнем году. Ну и, конечно, выразили удовлетворение тем, как наши соответствующие структуры, имея в виду Российский фонд прямых инвестиций и Монталакат, продвигают свое инвестиционное сотрудничество. Наши бахрейнские друзья увеличили вдвое свой взнос в совместную инвестиционную платформу. Это очень важный шаг, и я уверен, что он даст хорошие результаты. Договорились развивать обмен делегациями, стимулировать прямые контакты между бизнесом, обсудили ряд возможных проектов для совместной реализации в третьих странах. Безусловно, с обеих сторон мы ценим наши гуманитарные связи, научно-образовательное сотрудничество. В российских вузах обучаются порядка сотни бахрейнских студентов, преимущественно по медицинским специальностям, мы сегодня подтвердили готовность расширять число предоставляемых стипендий нашим бахрейнским друзьям. И, безусловно, весьма впечатляюще выглядят планы по реализации совместных культурных проектов, в том числе проведение в Монаме в текущем году Дней российской культуры, проведение двустороннего форума «Многообразие культур как основа для диалога», Организация так называемого музейного роуд-шоу здесь, на Бахрейне, и проведение фестиваля российского кино. Я уверен, что эти мероприятия вызовут большой интерес 
у наших граждан и будут способствовать развитию контактов между людьми. Мы условились по целому ряду направлений принять меры по завершению работы над соглашениями, которые укрепят нашу договорно-правовую базу. И, конечно, обсуждали международную повестку дня. У нас тесные консультации, которые проводятся по широкому спектру вопросов. Особое внимание мы сегодня и вчера уделили положению дел на Ближнем Востоке и на севере Африки. Прежде всего, это, конечно же, Палестино-Израильский конфликт, неурегулированность которого долгие-долгие десятилетия сохраняет здесь очаг напряженности, который вновь сейчас вызывает серьезное беспокойство в связи с последними событиями на палестинских территориях, в том числе в Иерусалиме. И обсудили мы необходимость возобновления прямых переговоров между палестинцами и израильтянами. Для этого есть международная правовая основа, для этого есть арабская мирная инициатива, которая была всеми поддержана, в том числе в Организации Объединенных Наций. И мы видим сейчас особую актуальность наращивания усилий, в том числе по линии квартета международных посредников, по линии Лиги арабских стран, ли, арабских государств, с тем, чтобы создать условия для скорейшего возобновления такого диалога и начала продвижения к двухгосударственному решению. Также нас беспокоит, как и наших бахрейнских друзей, и других коллег в районе залива, сохраняющаяся проблема палестинского единства, вернее, отсутствие палестинского единства. Мы многое делаем для того, чтобы помочь палестинцам преодолеть этот раскол, что будет, безусловно, в интересах создания необходимых условий для начала серьезных переговоров об урегулировании. Говорили мы про Сирию, про необходимость выполнять резолюцию Совета безопасности ООН 2254, мы рассказали о тех усилиях, которые Россия прилагает для продвижения к этой цели, в том числе в рамках астанинского формата совместно с нашими иранскими и турецкими партнерами. Рассказали о том, как мы стремимся создать максимально благоприятные условия для работы Конституционного комитета, в рамках которого делегации правительства и оппозиции обсуждают будущее своей страны. Многие другие аспекты сирийского кризиса также были предметом наших дискуссий, но отмечу лишь, что во многом эти проблемы будут поддаваться более эффективному решению, если будет восстановлено участие Сирии в арабской семье, членство Сирии в Лиге арабских государств. Здесь у нас совпадающие позиции, и мы продолжим поощрять такой, такой настрой. Мы говорили про ситуацию в заливе, в более широком плане, с точки зрения обеспечения здесь надежной безопасности и арабских стран залива, и Исламской республики Иран. Россия многие годы продвигает концепцию так, обеспечения такой безопасности на коллективных началах. Полгода назад мы обновили этот документ. Провели серию мероприятий с участием экспертов из всех прибрежных стран залива. Мы эту работу продолжим. Она нацелена на то, чтобы здесь воцарилась стабильность, мир, взаимное доверие. Наша концепция предлагает целую серию конкретных мер в этом, в этом направлении. Ну и здесь же, в этой же связи, мы рассказали о том, как... Россия участвует в усилиях по возобновлению совместного всеобъемлющего плана действий по регулированию иранской ядерной программы. Здесь возникли э, некие препятствия, прежде всего в силу позиции Соединенных Штатов, которые э, пытаются э, вы, выторговать дополнительные условия, э, изменив тем самым первоначальный э, замысел и первоначальное содержание СВПД, которое было утверждено Советом Безопасности ООН. Мы исходим из того, что справедливость требует возобновления СВПД без каких-либо изъятий, без каких-либо довесков. Мы а, упоминали также ситуацию в Йемене, здесь у нас тоже 
позиции в поддержку тех усилий, которые предпринимаются под эгидой ООН и которые в последнее время получили новое позитивное развитие в результате инициативы Саудовской Аравии и в результате объявленного перемирия, которое, мы надеемся, будет продлено. Ну и подробно говорили о ситуации на Украине по просьбе наших друзей. Мы подробно проинформировали о последних событиях. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the inauguration of the Freedom of Religion and Belief conference held under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. In his speech, Zayani conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and their wishes of success for the conference. He also welcomed the participants from the European Union to the conference that brings together policymakers and diplomats with religious and community leaders. The minister highlighted Bahrain's pride in continuing to build on a centuries-old history, during which authentic Bahraini values of tolerance, coexistence and respect for religions, belief and cultures derived from the principles of Islam were rooted. Zayani noted that Bahrain's long experience as a regional trade center has given Bahrainis a unique understanding of the value of cooperation and dialogue among all religions and societies. They have also appreciated the benefits uh, that occur to society through the protection of these freedoms based on the kingdom's keenness to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms regardless of uh, gender, origin, religion or sect. He noted that the kingdom granted grants freedom of religion and belief to all, which is reflected in the presence of mosques, churches, synagogues and temples, in addition to the opening of the Lady of Arabia Cathedral in 2021. As Hiani stressed that Bahrain, under the directives of His Majesty the King, is keen to consolidate a culture of tolerance, coexistence and fraternity, and to promote the values of peace, cooperation and human solidarity.